Another winless day at the Tony Macaroni Stadium. It's a Monday breakdown. Let's go. So before I get into the 1-0 loss to Livingston yesterday, if this is your first time on the channel or if you're a returning viewer, do hit the subscribe button below. You'll get notified every time a video goes live and you can follow us as well on Twitter at The Breakdown Inc. So let's start with the Livingston defeat in the Tony Macaroni Stadium. Andrew Shinney with the only goal of the game. Celtic have not won away to Livingston since 2007. They've now lost three games in the league this year. That's two away from yes last year's tally. And the losses have all come away from home. Ange has lost six games of the last seven away games in charge of Celtic. So I'm going to break this into two sections, I guess. So it's going to be essentially the positive spin on this game and the negative spin on this game. So I'll start with the positive. I said on Twitter, and you can see the tweet, that there is context to this result. Firstly, there is the fact that Celtic have not won at Livingston since 2007. It is not an easy place to go. They know how to set up to frustrate teams like Celtic in the Tony Macaroni Stadium. So that is the context. Not necessarily saying that is an excuse, but there is some things you have to take into account when you're discussing this loss and how we got here, essentially. The starting lineup. Volleyball and goalie came in at left back. I think that was a surprise to everybody. That was his first game in over a year for Celtic. The back four was a new combination again of Juranovic, who finally moved out to the right back position. Welsh was in the middle with Carter Vickers, and at left back was volleyball and goalie. So that was the first time that back four has played together. In midfield, no legs whatsoever, but no choice but to have no legs whatsoever because there are no replacements in midfield. For James McCarthy, who apparently had COVID up until last week, for uh, Tom Rogic and for David Turnbull, who have now played consistent games together, and it clearly does not work. Up front, third choice striker, Albina Jetty, I don't think is going to be the first choice replacement for Kyogo when he uh, eventually is fit and when Giacomacus is uh, essentially up to speed with what's going on. I think Albina Jetty is the third choice striker, and he was starting yesterday as well. Two fit wingers. On the wing you had Jota and on the other wing you had Abada who's just back from injury. And you had Mikey Johnson, a half fit winger on the bench. Including on the bench was four defenders, a centre defensive midfielder and a goalkeeper. So, I mean, there. this is years in the making. This is this result is not a freak result. I, 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 I wasn't fully confident going into this game. I thought Celtic would have got a draw at least. It's frustrating that they weren't able to score. But I don't think it's all that surprising. And again, I'm in the positive angles for this game of, you know, sort of leaning towards what Ange was trying to do. I see a lot of people criticizing his game plan and whether or not he should change his tactics to fit these games. I don't think he should. If you are a manager who has a rigid game plan, who wants to implement it no matter what is happening, you do not change a game plan to suit one game two games, three seasons, three games that you're going to play in a season. You just don't do it. You play your game plan that you're going to play against every single team. You adjust it here and there, but the same priorities are still there. The same sort of ideology is still within it. You don't change dramatically to play teams like Livingston, who you play twice a season, three times a season. So that is why I don't think that Ange should change his system. What the problem is is the players just simply do not suit the system. And I, I do wonder why people think that, or how they think the tactics could have changed all that much yesterday. So if you think about Angie's game plan, you need legs in midfield. You need fast-paced players. You need players like Hyogo up front, who's going to press the opposition, who's going to get in behind. They don't have that with Albina Jetty. The wingers, fair enough. I think Ab Ab Abada and Jota had poor games yesterday. In midfield, Tom Rogic and David Turnbull are both number 10s. Neither of them are quick, neither of them are all that fast in terms of pressing the opposition, neither of them are all that fit. So you're losing your legs in the midfield, you have two number 10s who are creative players who aren't going to do the dirty work, 
you need someone else in that midfield. James McCarthy playing centre defensive midfield. He has no legs. He has no pace. His ball progression is not that good. He is definitely not suited for this system. So in terms of a team like Livingston, I think Angie's football is actually ideal for playing a team like Livingston because if you have players who can play his style of football, it's fast pace, it's quick movements, it's getting behind the defence, it's pulling them out of shape. But you cannot do that with players who can't do that system. So if you think about James McCarthy in midfield, he slows the ball down. He slowed it down so many times yesterday because he just he doesn't have the ability to play that first pass on the turn and get the ball moving really quickly. David Turnbull and Tom Rogic, yes, they're really creative players. They're really good players on the ball, but they're not particularly quick. They can't close down the opposition. And when they get the ball, they do want to play that extravagant pass. They don't really want to just move it on really quickly. They want to get their heads up and move the ball. Albin Ejeti does not get behind the defence. So a team like Livingston who play a low block, you want to pull them out of position. You want to move the ball fast. You want to catch them off guard, essentially. If you're playing a more possession-based game in that game, then Livingston get back into shape. They frustrate Celtic like they did in a couple of seasons ago. And Celtic don't score. If you play a long ball system, you still don't have the players to do that because Albin Ejeti is too small and Jota and Abada are both small. So you can't really play a long game either. So Livingston away is actually quite a difficult game to play in terms of your tactics, especially with the players that you're working with. So I think there is a lot of context going into this game. And don't get me wrong, I am frustrated by the performance. I'm frustrated by the result. But I do think you have to take a couple of things into consideration, like the things I just mentioned. I think Ange spoke after the game quite well. He didn't sugarcoat it. Here's what Ange had to say after the Livingston defeat. And not the result we wanted to come in here, but what are your thoughts and your initial reaction on the performance? Yeah, disappointing. Um, disappointing for our supporters that, that made the trip out here and uh, disappointing for us because uh, yeah, I just didn't think we we gave a good account of ourselves today. We didn't start the game well. And then you know, once you do that, then you allow the opposition to you know, gain an advantage. They scored their goal and then we just couldn't find our way out of that hole. And would you say it's similar to Thursday when the players gave everything but the breaks you just couldn't get a shot on goal? Yeah, no, a little bit different. I, like I said, I just think today we didn't, the way we approached the game, um, our sort of mentality going into it just wasn't right. Um, you know, maybe we brought into the fact that we know it's a challenge to play here because of the surface or because of any other reason. We just started the game way too tentatively for us we, we like to be aggressive from the start and, and we have been in all games so far this is the first time we've just you know tried to ease ourselves into a game and you can't do that and we've got a number of players out injured with another midweek game in the league cup against Wraith Rovers on Thursday are you hoping to have a few more of them back yeah hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get a couple more back uh, for Thursday night which which will help because you know, obviously we're you know, we're putting an awful lot of load on, 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 so on, on a few of our players. But um, having said that, you know, we, we, we still had a team out there good enough today to, to get a result. And it's disappointing we didn't, so we need to rectify that on Thursday. So that was Ange after the game. I think he was spot on there. He was disappointed. I think we all were. I think none of us are really saying this was a good performance. There's lots to build on, but I think there is things that you have to take into consideration, like I mentioned before. Now, I'm going to give you the opposite angle. I'm going to give you the, not anti-Ange, but I suppose criticising Ange a little bit for this game. So, Livingston hadn't won a game going into this. Celtic have now lost three games in the season. They've only lost five last season in total. And they've lost six out of the last seven away games. So, Ange really needs to find a way to win these away games whether that's a mentality issue or whether that is a game plan issue maybe it is maybe he does need to tinker with it a little bit and it is worrying signs I don't think he's free of criticism by any means I think if this form continues especially away from home there will be a real strong criticism of him will the board act swiftly if things start to really go bad under Ange maybe they will if last year is any evidence they won't but I think it's hard to be overly critical of him. He's, We knew what we were getting with him when we got Ange in here. This is a manager who has always been really 
strong on his game plan, really strong on his ethos. This is what he does. Does he need to adjust to the Scottish League a little bit? I think it's hard to really get a grasp of where we're at at the minute until every player is fit again. Because, I mean, this form doesn't happen overnight. Celtic were in great form, then Kyogo gets injured, then Cal McGregor gets injured. The dominoes start to fall. And when you take Cal McGregor out of the team, that has a huge impact on the midfield. When you take Kyogo out of the forward line, that has a huge impact on the forward line. So these things together lead to the shit show that we see against Livingston. And I think we're just going to have to deal with these ups and downs at the minute. With If you honestly took the Celtic squad, tore it to shreds, looked at each player individually, I, I would say 12 players Celtic are working off that are good enough for this level at the minute. There are several positions where Celtic need to strengthen in terms of the quality that they have there. But apart from that, with what we're working at, there's no depth. So this comes down to, again, the board. What happens at board level reflects on the team. What happens on the on the team reflects on the manager. I don't necessarily think that Ange is the guy who we should be laying the blame at here. But maybe I'm being too soft. What do you think? What did you think of the game? Do you think I'm being too soft on Ange here? Do you think that he needs to be a little bit looser with his game plan? Do you, do you disagree with me in terms of what I'm saying about Livingston? Do let me know in the comments below. I'm open to criticism. I'm open to your opinions. Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This has been the Monday Breakdown. A fairly depressing one, I have to say. We'll chat to you later.